So a lot of you guys saw my Instagram story. There have been countless videos made about it. For me, what happened when I posted the video that now has gone very widespread, I was sitting here in the studio, I didn't have makeup on, I was ready to film a makeup try on and I received a text from James Charles. I was completely blindsided and my emotions just got the best of me. I never jump straight to social, but I was just like so gutted and I made that two minute little Insta story, I don't regret it. What I said in that video basically was that I feel really lost in this community and it wasn't specifically just about vitamins or about Halo, but it was just about being lied to and feeling disrespected. And you know, James Charles, he had nine days after Coachella to talk to me. He could have come face to face and chatted with me because he knew that this would hurt me. Um, we've had plenty of in-person conversations that were at length about and him not liking sugar bear hair and dragging the other people and being like, Tati, I'm, I'm on your side. Like, you've got me. Like, I will support you. Yes, mom. Like, you've got my, my loyalties. To not even get a phone call, to not even get a text a few days prior, but right after that sponsored post went up to have a text like, hey mom, love you, I'm stressed. Um, just so you know, X, Y, Z, I just did this post, but it's no big. And that's pretty typical of James Charles's behavior. I know that he has a way of just getting what he wants. Everybody was hanging out behind closed doors. I know that James Charles was very, very upset and obviously venting to his friends, which in turn, for whatever reason, made Gabriel Zamora feel empowered enough to call me out by name. There's so much going on with James Charles right now that I do not support, that I do not agree with. Fame, power, and a fat bank account will change almost anyone. And if you don't have people that will tell you to your face that you're doing the wrong things, you will change. And I tried to be that person for you, James. I really tried. I don't think there's any getting through to you and I don't want to be friends with you. I don't want to be associated with you. And I need to say that very publicly so that this chapter can just be closed. The moment that everything kicked off, he started panicking, he was texting me, and then it got increasingly demanding. And I don't deal well with someone telling me that I need to accept an apology on their terms to fix their problems. So when you cannot even say, I'm so sorry, I knew this was gonna hurt you, I hate seeing you cry, oh my gosh, I can't believe that you're feeling this upset. Like, I didn't think that you'd be this upset. When you can't have any emotion for the other person who loves you so much, and all you're caring about is your image and that people are questioning if it's you and people are commenting and that's what you're worried about, I'm not okay with that and I need to like take a time out. I knew that I needed to talk to James and I was planning on hopping in my car and you know, sitting down with him, but I changed my mind very, very quickly when I found out that he had been giving his side to drama channels. He had been in contact with plenty of them. I immediately knew that this was all about damage control and had little to do with his care for me because I just don't think that he does. My receipts, my receipts are like stacked thick. There was speculation when Shane Dawson came over to hang out with me who I adore, I don't know terribly well. We've been talking for a couple of months. The day that he came over where we were just playing with makeup, like that had been planned for a very long time. We had been talking, that date had been set before all of this kicked up. And I just like, I can't help but think that James Charles felt like that was somehow like some sneaky thing that happened because his ego is so big that he will think that everything is about him. A lot of people who are buddy buddy with him right now have not always had his best interest. They didn't want him to succeed. They saw this new kid coming up and they're like, no, this is not gonna happen. And I was constantly like, you're talented. You've got this, keep going. What do you need? How can I help you? I had a lot of influence at the time. You know, my channel was much bigger. Come on my channel, do my makeup. You know, we started talking pre cover girl. So we're talking before everything exploded. Um, and I had his back back then. I invited him to my wedding. Um, he didn't have money for the flight or hotel. So I paid for that happily. 
and he felt a little bit bad about it and I was like, hey, like let's just have fun and you can do my makeup for my wedding and help me out. Anytime that James would need help, he'd be like, dad, what should I do? And he'd come over and he'd be like, I don't like my manager, will you manage me? And James is like, no, I'm not doing that. I don't do that anymore. But your family, how can I help you? My husband would spend hours on the phone looking over contracts, getting him in a better position. So we helped him get into a style hall back when basically no one wanted to work with him because of his Ebola scandal. And everyone was really afraid that he was very toxic. But once again, you know, we had his back. James Charles never even apologized to my James. If this was just about Halo, then you know, like you know that this is our business apologize to him too, but that's not what this is about. Gabriel's video, something that I thought was really offensive was the insinuation that my relationship with James Charles was transactional and that I would be crazy to think that I had an exclusive with him when it came to my vitamins. And for someone that I helped when no one would, asking for absolutely nothing in return, never asking for a payback, never asking for a dime, any of the deals that were structured, if anyone ever offered a kickback, we'd say, no, put it in James's pocket. Help James, help him. You know, anytime I had an opportunity to help him make money, I would. If I could give him advice, I did. If he needed a safe landing, I was here. I mean, even to the point of putting myself at risk, Business-wise, you know, I had him here not too long ago. Like this was when a lot of scandal was happening in the community and he came over to my house. It was really, really late at night and he was super upset and he's like, I can't sleep. I'm, I, I feel so upset. I don't know what to do. I'm so stressed out. Oh my God, what do I do? And it had to do with his Morphe deal because the percentage they were offering him was not great to be honest. And at the time I personally felt that he deserved more. To the public, it didn't really look great. So James was kind of stressed out about that. He hadn't signed his contract, so I didn't feel like I was interfering with anything, giving him advice. Um, I negotiated another deal on the side for him that would have given him a million dollars the following week with a guarantee and with a higher percentage. So he had that thanks to me and thanks to the hours that my husband spent making sure that he had that padding and that you know safety net. And he went and talked to Linda and he got a higher percentage. So literally millions in his bank account. My relationship with James Charles is not transactional. I have not asked him for a penny. I've never been on his Instagram. You know, we had a mini falling out after the Jaclyn Hill launch party. Um, everybody was over at my house. We were all talking. Think like it takes a lot for me to really want to not be associated with someone. And so I've always had a really forgiving heart. Mentioned to him that, you know, it did kind of suck that he had never had me on his channel. And it's just really funny that we didn't end up collabing until it was in his favor. So he was popping off online about exposing the beauty community and doing a docu-series. And I was like, no. How entitled do you have to be to think that you have it rough. So after hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of talk, he arrived at the decision to not do it. I was like, it's gonna be like the downfall of your career, don't do it. Like don't expose the community because you're part of the community. Like, do you think you're better than everyone? Cause you're not. It was really hard to see the way he was treating Marlena from Makeup Geek. Like I did not like that. I also don't think that it's cool to publicly shame a woman who paved the way. Get off your high horse and have some respect. You don't have any for the people who are in this industry longer than you and that's the sad fact. That his audience is made up of 12 to 14 year olds, like dominantly, and he is role modeling to them his behavior. His behavior online is what they are seeing and what they are emulating as how they should behave to be successful and adored by the masses. Everything is over-sexualized. The last phone conversation that James Charles and I had, he said some things telling me about a situation that happened in Seattle at my birthday and it literally made me want to vomit. Oh my God, you tried to trick a straight man into thinking he's gay yet again and somehow you're the victim. You know, it's really disgusting to manipulate 
someone's sexuality, especially when they are still, you know, emerging into adulthood and don't quite have everything figured out. You are using your fame, your power, your money to play with people's emotions. You're threatening to ruin them. You're threatening to embarrass them. And you're doing that to have them behave sexually in your favor, even if they're straight. And you know what? That's not okay. And how dare you laugh about it and make meme after meme and retweet and this and that. And I love straight boys. I love straight boys and make it a joke because this behavior is not normal. It's not okay. Cracking someone's sexuality is not an escape room. This is shit that will follow them for the rest of their lives. And you need someone to tell you to stop it. And that's exactly what I did in your kitchen in front of Gabriel Zamora. Shocked that James even then was saying to his dad that every man is a little bit gay and that there's no such thing as a straight man. And you know, his dad's like, you're wrong, James, you're wrong. So talking about that at the dinner table with his parents was kind of weird. Him talking explicitly about sex and things that he would like to do. And like, I mean, like, I was just like, Phew. I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Like, I am used to this around, you know, everyone else but not his parents. Like I thought around his parents that he would not behave this way. Like it was just like, no big deal. Like sucking dick and cock. Like I'm just like, oh my God. Talking in detail about things you wanted to do to the waiter. And when I said, James, he's straight. Your response was, doesn't matter, I'm a celebrity. So freaking gross. And you said that in front of my family in front of my childhood friends, I had to call every one of them up the next morning and apologize on your behalf because it was so uncomfortable. Uh, you know, add insult to injury, the sugar bear hair thing, that was a blatant lie, like, come on. You went to Coachella, somehow had a security issue and magically sugar bear hair is there with a contract in hand to save the day for you and all of your friends. No company would ever go out of their way to have an extra, you know, handful of passes that cost thousands of dollars a piece, like just in case um, there's value there and there's a value exchange as you are the first person to overshare your finances with everybody. You should have walked away. You should have held on to your integrity. You're a phony. I know that now. I know that you're easily bought, that a good time is more important to you than your integrity for you to lie to me and make me the villain and go around and circulate a story to work on your side, saying that I'm loving the drama because it's improving sales. That's not the case. You're my family, I love you still. This is not about money at all. Like, you don't get to the success that James Charles has without knowing how to work someone. And I don't wanna be worked. I don't wanna be manipulated. And I tried everything that I could, um, but I don't matter to him right now. I'm only a, a, like a, a piece in his game and everything's a game and I'm tapping out. I could have just never talked to James again. Like, like you guys have to understand, like I'm freaking afraid of him. Like he's 19 and I'm afraid of him. I'm really sad to see things end this way and I hope that things change. I really, really do. Um, I didn't feel safe talking about any of this privately because I know that it would get twisted and used against me somehow. So I had to do it this way. And if I fall apart because people don't like what I have to say or that I said it loud here on my channel, um, I guess that's on me and this is my choice. I've said my piece, I'm moving forward, but the chapter's closed and I, I felt you guys deserved the truth and for your questions to be answered. And that's where I'm gonna end this video. Please know you mean the world to me and I'm eternally grateful to you guys.